My name is Courtney Gilbert. I'm curator of visual arts at Sun Valley Museum of Art. And our spring 2021 exhibition is titled Clay, Silver, Ink, Sun Valley Center at 50. This exhibition is the kickoff to a year long celebration of Sun Valley Museum of Art's 50th anniversary. And it takes a look back at some of the early years of the Sun Valley Center for the Arts, which was founded in 1971. I'm Kristen Poole, I'm the Artistic Director of the Sun Valley Museum of Art. And a 50th anniversary is a big milestone, an important milestone. And anniversaries are an opportunity for us to reflect on what's been accomplished and also to think about the original intentions and values of this organization. It's been a great opportunity to look back and also really remark on how similar the values and intentions of the organization have remained over the course of the last 50 years. Obviously, we can't possibly put all that has occurred and all of the great artists and all of the wonderful people who have passed through here in the last 50 years in one exhibition. So as Courtney said, we really condensed it to a period of time when the center's intention was to really be a teaching institution. The exhibition was guest curated by two artists, Peter Delory and Jim Romberg, who worked here at the Sun Valley Center for the Arts in the 1970s and 1980s, when Peter Delory was director of the photography department at the center, and Jim Romberg was director of the ceramics department. Both of them were here at a time when the center was primarily a teaching institution, bringing master artists from across the country here to teach workshops and classes to students who traveled from around the world. The primary discipline that became the focus of the educational programs here were ceramics, photography, and printmaking. And so together, Peter and Jim decided to craft an exhibition that would look at the early history of the center. That this was not an art school. This was not necessarily a place where people came to learn skills and skills only. It was Pete who said that we were not so much interested in what people were making as what they were doing. What was their intention? Where was the motivation? Where was the art coming from? And I think that sort of impulse to really use the art as a way to explore who we are, what our world is made of, has been a through line for the last 50 years at this institution. The exhibition consists of almost 100 artworks by more than 60 artists. One of the most significant photographers who traveled to Sun Valley was Mark Klett. And Mark came along with Ellen Manchester, who at one point was director of photography here. A project that he and Ellen directed called the Rephotographic Survey Project. The project took the two of them around the American West where they sought out the precise sites that 19th century survey photographers who were making photographs of the American West to send back to Washington DC documenting what they represented as a vast empty land and then re-photographed those sites nearly a hundred years later. And in the exhibition we have a wonderful photo that Mark made um, with Ellen Manchester standing on a rock at a high point overlooking the Green River. And we also have two other portraits that Mark made while he was here at Sun Valley Center for the Arts. One of Peter Delory sitting above Boulder City in the Boulder Mountains, and the other of David Wharton, the master printmaker at Sun Valley Center for the Arts. It's a photograph of David swimming in Warm Springs River, his form just barely visible under the water. One of the things that Peter Delory has really emphasized as we've talked to him about this exhibition and about his time here at the center was that it was important to him to bring photographers who were working in a wide range of styles and varying approaches to the art of photography. I think it's hard for us now to remember that even in the 1970s, photography was still staking its claim as a fine art. So for instance, Frederick Summer is probably one of the most famous photographers who was here. And he was throughout his career, somebody who experimented with things like surrealism, with the art of collage, with taking multiple negatives and putting them together to create a single image with juxtaposition, incongruity. We have one beautiful photograph from a whole series that he worked on for more than 30 years of cut paper photographs. He would cut butcher paper and let it curl and form into almost sculptural objects and then use photography, add light, dramatic lighting to create the final artwork. Sherry Heiser is a woman who is really important to this history. 
She started a very significant workshop in photography in Aspen, Colorado called the Center of the Eye at a time when photography, as Courtney said, was really trying to establish itself as a legitimate art form. Sherry was a huge advocate of photography as well as being an artist herself. Because of those connections, she was able to invite people to Sun Valley to entice them here to work on this project that was really very, very new. And one of the most important people that she invited was a man named Pete Delory, who she had worked with at the Center for the Eye in Aspen. This image by Peter is an image that he did of a woman named Andy Ostheimer who worked with him in the photography department. But it's less about a portrait of Andy than it is about this moment in photography where light and form and the materials of what made an excellent photograph were as important as the subject matter. Other photographers, like Lee Friedlander, came to a very different answer to the question of how photography can be a fine art. Friedlander is interested in the American landscape and American interests and obsessions. He's done many road trips throughout the United States, making photographs that are often very funny, um, that ask viewers to see through his lens a particular view of life. We have a photograph made in Texas in the 1960s, one made in New Mexico in the 1970s, and both of them break a lot of photographic and compositional rules. He asks you to see the world in a different way through his work. I would say 98% of the artists that we included were teachers here at the Sun Valley Center for the Arts. Tina Barney was the exception to that. Tina you know, was a student and a very avid student. Tina is internationally known and recognized now as a really important photographer of portrait and narrative. She really has focused her lens on her world, which is a world of privilege, um, primarily located in the East Coast. And she has this wonderful, really marvelous way of taking a photograph of people in a room and it feels at first as if you're looking at an image of people doing what they normally do in their daily lives, but there's always tension involved if you look more deeply, and Tina has a way of capturing that tension. As she has matured as an artist, has really credited the Sun Valley Center for the Arts as a place where she learned deeply the art of photography. This was a moment both in photography and in ceramics where these artists were all sort of pushing the envelope. They were questioning the traditional constraints that were put on these two artistic practices. And two of the artists in the exhibition that I think are really doing that in an obvious and exceptional way is a man named Jerry Yulesman who was really, really important to the movement. He became an expert at photomontage, putting images together in a format that is uncomfortable and incongruent, but really tells a wonderful story. This is an image where there's a very small man walking on a large map in a really elegant room, and then the room's open to the sky. This other image by Yulesman is a wonderful image that actually is a portrait of Sherry Heiser, and there's a, many layers to this image, and the way that you Yulesman blends these and combines these very, very artistically. It looks easy at this moment because we're so used to all of the technology available to us. But at this time, this technique of blending all of these images together was really difficult and he was expert at it. The ceramics department at the Sun Valley Center for the Arts was a place where artists had the opportunity to work with exceptional students. And the real glue to that project was Jim Romberg. He was a student of probably one of America's most important ceramic artists, a man named Paul Solner. Both of them became master craftspeople of an approach to clay making and glazing called Raku Ceramics. And he and Jim together really influenced a huge generation of students. And these are not pot forms, they are not vessel forms. They are really based on color and form and grit in a completely different way that approaches clay through the idea of sculptural form and mark making. Um, I love these two pieces of Jim's ceramics because I think both of them really get to this notion of how artists were trying to break out of and challenge this notion that ceramics needed to be pots. They needed to be vessels. In both of these pieces of gems, you get the sense that he may have started or may have assumed to make a vessel, but then he's opened them up and made them completely non-functional items. 
That notion of scale is also carried out by a really important Montana artist, a man named Rudy Audio, who taught at Montana for many, many decades. And he makes these beautiful, luscious, vase-like forms that again are oversized. And they have these sort of wings on them. And then he goes in and he paints Matissean-like figures that are female forms and often horse forms that move around the body of the pot and invite you around the whole form of the sculpture. When you think about the size and scale of what Wrights and Audio were doing, the opposite of that incredible intentionality is reflected in the work of Richard Shaw, who was a California-based artist who made these beautiful, beautiful trompe l'oeil, meticulous sculptures that again have this surrealist juxtaposition of disparate things attached to one another. Every bit of these pieces is clay and every bit of it is precisely made. One of the disciplines that was essential to the Sun Valley Center for the Arts was its printmaking department. David Wharton was an exceptional, exceptional master printer. These black and white prints of Dave's that we have in the exhibition are typical early Wharton images where he takes lots and lots of different sort of pieces of stories and embeds them all together in this hugely, wonderfully textured black and white imagery work. David was one of those rare breeds of printers who could welcome anyone into his studio, talk with them for a while, do some drawings together and then translate what was often painter's work into print work. And you can see in these images David's skill. They're really, really, really different approaches to the artwork and yet David manages to pull each of these prints in beautiful ways. While photography, printmaking, and ceramics were the primary focuses of education programs at the Sun Valley Center during the period, there were also really wonderful classes taught in painting. And we have paintings made by Mary Rowland, who taught painting here, but also started the Sun Valley Center for the Arts' first gallery, the Potato Gallery, which was on the mall in Sun Valley, and was a place for students and faculty to show their work. We have two really wonderful Idaho landscape paintings of hers in the exhibition. One of the collaborative studio projects that happened at the center where artists would come in and they'd come in as photography people and they'd go and they'd wander to the ceramic studio or they'd come in as ceramic artists and they'd wander to the printmaking department. There was all this cross dialogue that happened. And one of those intentional cross dialogues happened when Pete Laurie and David Wharton collaborated on a project called Paradox, where they invited some of the nation's most important artists to come to Sun Valley and work together and work with students. It included people People like William Wegman, William Wiley, Mike Henderson, Terry Allen, and Joe Harvey Allen, all here together in Sun Valley, working together, exchanging ideas, pulling prints. You can see in the body of work between Terry Allen's work and William Wiley's work and Yvonne Streetman's work and David Wharton's work, a dialogue that happens, and you can see their influence with each other. As we talked with Peter and David and reviewed sort of their intentions as directors of these two really important departments, one of the through lines that's most important is this sort of approach to workshopping and teaching and being a part of this community by asking the question, why not? Why not try to do big, ambitious projects? Why not try to bring artists here who are at the tops of their fields? Why not be aspirational? Why not do this over here, even though I've never done it before? Why not collaborate? Why not venture out into the community instead of staying in the studio? Why not reach for a dialogue that can be inspirational instead of just working as an individual artist in a studio? And why not experiment with new programs and new projects and be willing to fail, but hopefully to succeed together in, a, in collaboration with others? That question and that collaborative approach and that willingness to experiment and seek the most that art can give you in all of its forms, not just in its skill, but also in its ability to communicate things that are often very difficult to communicate, was really an essential part of what the Sun Valley Center for the Arts was at its beginning and what it still is today. <laughs>